First of all, I would like to state my firm belief that Islam in its original form is about applied sacred geometry and universal laws. My name is Michelle Gibson. It was nothing like the weaponized form of radical Islam we see today that is playing a divisive and destructive role in the world that is not in accordance with humanity's best interests. Marco Roden, inventor of the torus-shaped Roden coil, unlocked the key to vortex-based mathematics, the template for the universe, from studying Baha'i scriptures. From this he came up with the number nine, which Baha'i scriptures and other ancient texts spoke of as the most omnipotent number. He drew a circle as depicted in the top left picture with the numbers one through nine drawn around it. From that he discovered an intriguing number system contained therein. This led to an awareness that this number system, based on the relationship between the numbers 369, was the mathematical fingerprint of God. Salimie Mosque Dome in Adirne, Turkey, is considered to be one of the highest achievements of Islamic architecture, said to have been built between 1569 and 1575. Its beautiful construction and art were based on sacred geometry. Are we even capable of coming remotely close to building something like this with today's technology? I don't think so. Instead of the historical narrative we have been taught, I am seeing that there was an ancient global unified civilization, the Moorish Empire, and that all of these examples of architecture were built by the Moors. Since it's not in our historical narrative, we don't even question what we are taught about it being built by other cultures or civilizations. Moorish masons of the ancient ones were the master builders of civilization, and their handiwork is all over the planet. All of their Moorish science symbolism was taken over by other groups claiming to be them, falsely claiming their works or piggybacking on their legacy, or given a darker meaning by association with certain things that were not the original meaning. For example, this is the Great Seal of the Moors on the left, compared to the symbol on the right, which is on the back of the U.S. $1 bill. You can see on it that certain symbols were co-opted from the original and have come to have certain negative associations, like associating the pyramid with the eye on top of it with Big Brother, the New World Order, and the Illuminati. The Moors are friends and servants of humanity, with five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They are about teachings to activate the pineal gland and about the human potential to reconnect to our divine natures in this lifetime. So with all of this preface, what caught my attention about onion domes? First, I believe what I have been studying in images from the past two years, that ancient phallic symbols in the landscape, like what I'm going to show you here, have morphed into onion domes. They probably serve a function of the divine masculine as something like an energy conductor in the grid's universal energy flow system. These are the Drumheller Badlands in Alberta. You find these in Cappadocia in Turkey. And this in the city of Rocks in New Mexico. This is Chimney Rock in North Carolina. And this is found in the Grand Escalante Staircase in Utah. So next, I strongly retained the impression from what I was taught in school that onion domes are only associated with Orthodox churches, right? That is what I remember anyway. So when I started on this journey around the world, I couldn't help but notice that they are everywhere. So here are comparison photos between the similarities of the Taj Mahal in India and the Hui Mosque in China and the Royal Pavilion in Brighton, England, the Hazrat Sultan Mosque in Kazakhstan, and the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque in Oman. All of these countries figure prominently on the planetary grid lines. 
Next, a series of comparisons involving the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. The Moors are actually given credit for this one. This is the Alhambra Theater in Bradford, England, and the Moors are not given credit for this one. And in this slide, you can see the architectural similarities between the Piazza della Signoria in Florence, Italy, the Alhambra in Spain, the Jama Masjid Mosque in Delhi, India, and the Pina Palace in Sintra, Portugal. The bright colors of St. Basil's Russian Orthodox Church in Moscow and this mosque in Singapore remind me of each other. And these whimsical yet flamboyant designs remind me of this one in Sri Lanka in a different kind of way. I am frequently seeing Twin Towers. I looked it up and found this explanation. The entrance of sacred and mysterious places have been guarded by two pillars. Whether in art or architecture, twin pillars are archetypal symbols representing an important gateway or passage towards the unknown. So check out the Twin Towers in these monumental works of architecture, the Town Hall in Augsburg, Germany. The Frauenkirche in Munich, Germany. The Central Synagogue of New York. The view from Central Park in New York City. The Mormon Temple at Palisades State Park in Utah. Now I am going to share comparisons of similarity in architectural styles that I found from different places around the world. This first set of four is a direct comparison of the similarities starting with this mosque in Amman, Jordan. This is the University of Otago in New Zealand. And the Seoul Central Mosque in Korea. And lastly, the Tokyo Mosque in Japan. Please note the similarity in style, particularly of the design of the arches between the Crystal Mosque in Malaysia, the mosque in Grozny, Chechnya, the Alhambra in Spain, and the Cora Concha in Peru. Here is a comparison between the domes of the two towers of the Crystal Mosque in Malaysia on the left and the Central Synagogue of New York on the right. Next is a comparison of the central window of the Central Synagogue of New York on the left, a carved wooden relief in the Cor Concha in Cusco, Peru in the middle, and an example of Alhambra art in Granada, Spain on the right. And finally, a comparison of a mosque in Afghanistan with one in Armenia. I hope I have given enough information and evidence to give what I am saying serious consideration. I believe there was an ancient, advanced global civilization that was unified. I believe we have been given a false historical narrative that removed the civilization from our awareness. I don't buy the similarities are random and coincidental, nor do I believe the phallic shapes were created from natural processes. Stay tuned, because I have a lot more to share in future videos.